fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind-the-scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. It was our fourth day in Pietro Pertoza, and even though the weather still didn't look good, we were trying to knock this lesson out. All right, it's like 6.30 in the morning, and uh, Aliyah might already be up on the hill. I think we are a little late getting up. The weather was certainly better, but it wasn't good enough to complete this lesson. I woke up very early at 6 a.m., looked outside, and it looked relatively clear, so I walked all the way back up here, and I was able to get an okay shot. Honestly, by my usual standards, the shot itself was just okay, but considering we've had four solid days of nothing but rain and mist, being able to see the town and a little bit beyond this morning was definitely better than it's been. Oh man, I was freaking out for a minute. I went out to shoot sunrise and my camera was going, it was an interval timer mode, everything was fine, then all of a sudden I noticed it stopped shooting. So I was gonna go re-engage the interval timer, but I wanted to check the shots first and it said card read error. And I'm not sure what happened to the card. Maybe it was too cold, who knows, but everything's there. So all the files that I shot are actually there and everything's okay. In your camera, if you have two cards, you can set it to mirror, just in case you have a problem with one card. I usually don't do that, but I think from now on, especially in this town here, I'm gonna be using the mirror mode on my memory cards. So the weather in this location has not been good. Um, we're like totally rained in today, at least we're not snowed in, but if you go out here, like look at this. Open this window. So we don't even have basic things like uh, water, <laughs> like no water at all. My big question, I guess, is what are Lee and Patrick doing? Now, I wouldn't exactly call Lee and Patrick pampered, but they're definitely used to having regular showers and or baths like uh, Mr. Lee Morris. So I'm wondering how they're handling this uh, lack of water situation themselves. Uh, do do Grandi. Yes, see, si, see. Si. Grandi. There you go. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Grazie. E saponi? The water has been off for like 12 hours, maybe. Which means we can't flush toilets. We can't boil water. We're running out of water to even get coffee with. Um, we can't shower. So she acts shocked that we don't need towels, but the reason we don't need towels is because there's no water to take a shower. Aliyah continued to take showers, however. Here I have a like gallon and a half here, a few liters at least of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that into this pot. This pot's been sitting on the radiator for a little while. And then I'm gonna have me a wash. What's really weird is I don't know, besides maybe Lake Matheson, I don't know that we had a single location on any of the photographing the worlds we've done where we had total failure. But after four days of horrible weather in this town, it wasn't looking good for this lesson. So I'm pretty uh, notorious for just leaving cameras on the side of roads and letting them do their time lapse. I just left one down here and I feel pretty good that no one would steal it because I don't really even see any people. I hope it's just... Uh, not covered in water, especially the lens. Fingers crossed. Yep, there it is. Still clicking away. This view is pretty awesome. And making time lapses when you have this to work with. Look at this. We even have a boulder here that's being held up by wire because it's just precariously sitting on the top of this mountain. What I have here is the uh, Tamron 18 to 27 lens. And this thing is a monster for video. Like it is so nice just to have this lens and be able to take uh, wide angle and telephoto shots. And for video, it's perfect. I'm just getting a little time lapse of the tip of that mountain there. The clouds going by, we can use for uh, B-roll. So I'm gonna shoot it a little wide, a little tight, and I can get right on top of it. Right now you can kinda of see the shot that I have. So 
So we've been stuck in this apartment for a lot of days and I thought it would be useful to edit some of the time lapses that we've done. Here's the best time lapse that we have from this entire location and it was the very first night. Unfortunately, it was raining really bad and I'll play this back. As you can see, I show up in the frame as I was trying to shield the lens from rain. I actually got in this time lapse quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is waste a lot of time and clean up these frames so that I can get as much of this time lapse without my body coming into it. Premiere now has these masking options. So if you go to opacity and then you hit this little free draw tool, you can create a mask, which is what I did right here. And I've just drawn a mask, I've feathered it a little bit. And if I turn this layer on and off, you can see, it's just putting a frame from like one or two seconds back right over here so that when I come here to the beginning, especially these sequences where there's a lot of my body, I can turn this on and it's not perfect, but you won't really notice. See, there's a little section I need to fix, but when you play it back, you can see that I have significantly improved this time lapse and made it not so distracting with my body showing up. And then Patrick saw a glimmer of hope. So I'm here editing all this dreary footage and I look up and I see hard light on the floor. And oh my goodness, look at this. Clouds in the sky, the sun. This is crazy. It's like a whole different city. Is there a chance we are actually going to get an image for this lesson? It's like the one possible last chance we have, sunset on the last day. And right now it's uh, 11 o'clock and it's looking super promising. So hopefully this holds out and we actually get this lesson to work. So we've had four horrible days of weather and now the rest of the week is supposed to be like beautiful, warm, partly cloudy. I'm sure there's gonna be epic sunrises and sunsets. Unfortunately, we'll be gone. But hopefully we'll be able to get one or two shots out of here. Uh, the original plan was like three or four, but I'll take one at this point. And uh, it's a cute little town, people are nice, so it's not the end of the world. While the weather was nice, we decided to step outside and film the intro to this lesson with our iPhone. These gimbals, when we film with the iPhone, they stabilize, uh, you know, going back and forth like this, and they can actually go up and down like this as well. But the Z axis, which is like physically up and down, it, it can't stabilize that. And if you're walking with your arm out, your hand's gonna vibrate. So what we've done is we've added a light stand to the bottom here to give it some weight. And now as I move around, it dampens the, the vibration just because it's heavier now. Um, we haven't actually tested this yet though, so let's let's see if it actually works. We'll do a test in a minute, but I think right now we're just gonna interview Elia here. Welcome to Pietra Pertosa, everybody. This is a beautiful little castle town nestled in the Basilicata region of Italy. Another very cool thing about this place is the mountains themselves. They call them the Little Dolomites and they're extremely dramatic with spiky spires that attach to the town, making this a beautiful place for photography. So that was working. Uh, I thought I got a really good shot, but Patrick said with the audio, he can hear my snowboard pants swooshing. And so now we have swapped positions. Rolling. There is nothing about this landscape that isn't dramatic. The jagginess of the spires, the beauty of the old castle, almost medieval looking town. We just finished filming with this for the first time. It seemed like it was more steady, but we're going to do a test now and see if it is. So I'm gonna get Patrick to run in place while holding this. We figured out that the optical stabilization in the new camera actually caused more of a problem than the stabilization itself. The slight jitter that you see is not the camera refocusing, it's actually the optical stabilization getting tricked into moving around. Because of this, we've learned that the new iPhone with optical stabilization is not the best choice with a gimbal. So this is our final night here. Yes. And this is the best weather we've had. Are you feeling good? Is this gonna work tonight? Yeah, I, I really like the way it looks actually. There's a little bit of blue in the sky. Yeah. It looks like the sun. I don't know if it's gonna peek out of the clouds, but a bit of a light on the mountains. Yeah. No, I, 
He lies yeah, there. Pretty good. <laughs> he lies like it's actually a daytime shot now because, <laughs> dude, I don't care what kind of shot it is, it's way nicer than it's been. The most impressive piece of gear that we have by far, and we have all new gear for this project, is the new DJI Mavic. We got this literally one day before we left. I didn't have the highest hopes for the video quality on this thing, but I am here to tell you that this is absolutely amazing. We've been shooting in 4K with this at 30 frames a second and then slowing it down to 24 frames a second. As you can see, it easily packs down into any bag. I can. It, it almost takes up less space than uh, a normal camera. Even the Phantom 4 does have slightly better video and it is going to perform significantly better in uh, low light and higher ISO situations. But for 99% of the time when I actually wanna fly this drone, even if it's at dusk, you are going to get incredible footage, which I think actually might look better than the Phantom 3 camera in this incredibly small package. So you can see here, your phone plugs directly into this. I'm just gonna slide my phone in right here. This kind of fits in with the teeth there so you can hold your phone, hit the camera button, and we are ready to go. And I'm flying. It still has all of the sensors that the Phantom has, so it can see the ground, it can see what's in front of it, and watch, when I bring it to the ground, it's gonna look at the ground and make sure that it's safe to land here. So I'm holding down, it stops for a second, and then it automatically lands for you and makes sure that it's a safe landing. After I was done flying, we wrapped up the lesson. Now I'd love it if the sun was setting right behind my shot here, but I am pretty fortunate that during sunset, it is setting off to the left here. So if I'm lucky, there'll be a little clear strip in the sky and I may get a little bit of color and light as well. Initially scouting this location, I thought that this spot was going to be the best, but here's when subtle changes to your position have drastic effects on your composition. I'm thrilled to say that after five days of horrible weather, mediocre food, and our water being turned off constantly, we were actually able to salvage this lesson. It was clear enough, it was a little overcast, it could get better later, but I know that those shots are good enough to complete this lesson, and we've been in this town five days to try to get one shot. So thank goodness it's all okay. I think we can call this one a win. The last tutorial that we did with Peter Hurley, Illuminating the Face, we filmed that entire tutorial in five days. And we worked for five days to film this one lesson with Aliyah. That's how much effort and time and money we put into this thing. I'm currently transferring over the footage from these five days onto another hard drive, just so I have it triple backed up. We have it double backed up here and then another back up here. And I just noticed how big it is. It is 134 gigabytes for one lesson. And when we're done with the lesson, you know, maybe it'll be a 20 or 30 minute lesson. <laughs> but, uh, oh my gosh, I have never worked so hard for such a short amount of a finished product in my entire life, but it feels good to be done with this lesson. And tomorrow we're moving on to the next location. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we are finally able to move on to the next lesson. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six cameras set up, all shooting this blue hour. We've got cameras taking pictures and cameras doing time lapses. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.